Hi everybody, a happy Wednesday to you, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Uh, I hope you, that you're all well, of course, that's the top priority these days. Um, today I'm going back to the junk journals that we'd started a while ago, a couple of weeks, a week ago maybe. Um, but the last couple of lives that I've done have been on sewing. And so I've only got one desk, and so it was sort of overtaking with sewing machine, etc. So I haven't actually done anything further. Well, maybe some little bits, but nothing major to the... Um, you remember we're doing a, a Flower Fairy one and a Beatrix Potter one. So I'll just show you where we're up to with that. Uh, this is the little booklet that goes inside the, um, the big lap book. So this is our uh, flower fairy one, and this is this one's lavender. So this is the back. Um, well, it's kind of the front cover really, and it's got this lovely little pocket in it. I'm sure you can remember doing these. I had to familiarise myself with them this morning because I'd forgotten everything, um, and it just it folds out like that. It's got other folds and stuff in it, but ostensibly that's what it is. So in this pocket here, we've got some writing paper and I didn't actually show you how to do that. Um, that's the writing paper there. And I think it goes nicely in a junk journal because it's lots and lots of room to journal on, which sometimes you can be a bit short of. You know, if it's all journaling cards and tags, doesn't actually leave loads of room to journal on. So um, put that the other way so we can see the lavender. So the state of play with the Beatrix Potter one is this. This is it. <laughs> it's um, This is the cover. This is the bit that goes in the middle. Um, but I've got a sellotape hinge here so I obviously was planning on putting another page over that. So you know that's that's great, lovely, more, more the merrier. But this bit here is the same as this bit here, and this bit needs some writing paper in it, definitely. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make some writing paper. So it is junk journaling. It's just slightly different. And that, that ties up. I stuck this underneath this uh, window pocket, and I stuck this under there. So I've got a tie to tie it up with. And ultimately, it will get tied into the, the journal down the middle. It's pretty, isn't it? I, I actually treated myself to some um, Flower Fairy stamps and I stamped them out and then coloured them in. Unfortunately, I've got a bit of um, liquid pearls on that. It'll come off, not to worry. Uh, and I think it's a really pretty page, that actually. So there we are. That's the state of the flower fairies. Moving back to um, this is Tom Kitten. This this one. So what I've done is for the decoupage, like the lavender on the the one I've just shown you, I've actually printed off some Tom Kitten images on some tissue paper. Obviously, you can't put tissue paper through a printer on its own. It's just not going to work and you'll end up in a right mess. So what you do is you just put it onto a sheet of ordinary photocopy paper, ordinary printing paper that you'd use, and just put some masking tape over the, well, over the leading edge and the back edge, really just to keep it smooth, and then just print it as you would normally. The thing is, you do sometimes get creases like that but i'm not i'm not overly concerned you know it's a it's a junk journal first thing we need to do however before we get into the exciting world of decoupage is just make our um writing paper up and this is ordinary uh, thin photocopy paper that i have coffee stained so first thing to do is get your gesso out I'm using the coffee stain stuff for Peter Rabbit because um, he's more cream. The flower fairies, I started with white paper for them because their lace and uh, stitching and everything on them is white. So, you know, have a think about that. What 
what colour you want your lace to be, etc, etc. And try and make things coordinate if you can. So I'm just going to get some gesso out here and put it on my uh, glass board. And just, you can do this with a card if you want as well, actually. In fact, I've got a card there, so I'll just... I'll just do it without it. It's a bit bit quicker and probably also a bit more random, which is kind of what we want. You can, I can just about hear the questions from here. You can print your decoupage uh, on an inkjet printer, apparently. I've never done it, but I know somebody that has. And she says that if you leave it overnight for the ink to sort of really dry off, you'll be fine. Uh, I did mine on a laser printer and I know that works. So so that's that's fine. For, that's all that you're aiming for, really, that sort of look. Um, it's just we do this because, well, it looks nice for a start. But secondly, the colour that we're going to put over the top will take differently where the gesso is to where the ordinary paper is. So you get a sort of uh, more mottled look. So one piece done. Need to find some space to dry them. They don't take very long to dry because it's the you know, it's a really thin layer of gesso that you're, you're putting on. Try and do it random if you can. Random's quite difficult. And over we go. I'm using a uh, golden, make golden gesso. You don't have to use golden. Um, it's a bit of a waste of golden gesso, to be honest. I use it because I do acrylics and um, it's kind of the best gesso you can get hold of, really. But for this sort of thing, it's ex it's excessively good. Any cheap gesso will do. Sometimes, you, with the cheaper ones especially, it's quite gritty which is not what you want. But if you're in England, there's a company called The Works. They do cheap gesso and it's really, really nice. It's smooth and goes on a treat. I didn't think about where I was going to put these to dry. <laughs> I'll just decorate my uh, desk like a washing line. <laughs> they only take seconds to dry, to be fair, because it's really thin. So Justin's had his birthday this week. What did he get? <laughs> Whole load of nothing. <laughs> Which is pretty normal. We tend not to sort of go mad at birthday times because generally through the year, certainly I do, I get nice little treats. Um, gen generally in the shape of art products. So when it comes to my birthday, there's Nothing much that I need or is on the required list. You don't need to put it on. I mean, this is ending up kind of like all over. You, you don't really need to do that. It'll be fun cleaning my glass mat after, isn't it? Oh well. I'm running out of gesso, so let's see what I can scrape up. That's probably fine. Right. So. Um, let's just take a bit of some water and a bit of kitchen towel. See if I can get rid of some of this. There you go, 
if you if you go in quite quickly before it sets it is it, it's kind of an acrylic paint this so it's you know it's water based for one thing but it is plasticky so try not to let it set if you can help it because you, you just have to get a um, razor blade or something out and it's just a pain so there we are that's not so bad sorry you're getting the glare of these lights today um that's because i've got my glass board out right so finished with the gesso so i'll put that away because it's a big pot lying on top of my desk right so here we go then pretty much dry pretty much dry Mm, not so dry but probably dry enough yeah okay i'll just swap these for a minute Ooh, cyclists people going past wow hi isabel thanks for joining <laughs> right so the next stage in this process is uh we're going to go sponging and uh, with the lavender one, I used two different sorts of purpley colours. With this, I think because he's got his <laughs> he's got his best blue suit on, God love him, but it doesn't fit him anymore because he's grown fat. <laughs> so it's all torn. Um, but he has got a blue suit on, so I think I'll go for blue. So what I'm going to do is... Um, that brush is all gessoy now, but never mind. I'm just going to go for this blue here really moisten it up and i'm going to build a pool of blue here behind your head. Uh, a big pool of blue and plenty of pigment in it these are just cheap watercolors they can be as cheap as you like do not get your daniel smiths out for this please so that's quite a lot of pigment there. I'm probably going to need more, but we'll come back to it if I do. Uh, and I've just got my spray bottle. Let's clean my brush off a bit because it's got loads of pigment on it. And then just dilute it. Dilute it right down. Okay, so now I'm just going to take a sponge. Now this is one of these, um, I think they're bathroom sponges, but I bought it in a really cheap shop like B&M or something like that. Uh, and I just chopped it up. So I have used pieces of it before. I haven't done any sponging for so long, but it's just, as you see, watercolor and water. And I'm just going to pick it up with my sponge and give it a try and see if it's going to work. Oh yeah, that's nice. So it's quite a bright blue, that. That's okay, though. I don't really want it everywhere. Just... The thing about sponging is to pounce. Pounce up and down. Don't slide it sideways, as you'll get... It won't be nice. So I'm just going over this again just to try and pick up the the dampness off it so as we've got a chance of doing the other side as well. So there, pretty, pretty, pretty. I'll just leave that hopefully to dry um, and start on the next one. You don't want this sopping either. You know, you have to pick it up watercolour. Obviously, it's, you know, it's like water, but you don't want masses on it. So kind of squeeze your sponge off a little bit before you start. And I've just got uh, some down there, which I don't want. Now, for this, I'm going to try and leave this sort of size gap here because that's where I want to put the decoupage. Um, and I don't want this behind it. Otherwise, it, you'll see it through the decoupage. 
and it will kind of spoil the effect. So I'm just going to leave that sort of gap down there for Tom Kitten to live in. So I'll squeeze that off onto my kitchen towel and then come back with a dryer sponge. I wouldn't necessarily do this if I was doing it on my own um, because it can take as long as it wants to take to dry. Um, but for the sake of this, I, I want to get as much off as I can so I've got a chance of uh, doing the decoupage. So there. It's pretty, isn't it? And it's drying, as watercolour does, much, much lighter. So it's it's getting, getting better as it dries. So once again, into this big pool of blue, pick some up, then just squish it off on your um, kitchen towel there. Oh, this is nice. It's hardly there. It's lovely. I mean, you want them all to be a family, you know, you want them all to look alike, but not the same. Look alike but not the same. This is very light. I mean, once you, you know, you can always go back in with sponging, that's the thing. And you can do a couple of colours as well. Just don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You know, at the end of the day, it's paint and it's a bit of paper. If you really, really make a mess, paint and a bit of paper you know it's not the end of the world so I'm just going back over some of the areas that are really quite light so there we are that's that one I'll leave that one to dry oh I don't want to put it near the flower fairies pick up your paint dab it off Sorry guys, the dog just ran over my camera. <laughs> Sorry, they got that one turned off at the minute anyway. Oh right, okay. That was a, it was a superfluous camera, so we're all right. I thought it was the camera that uh, I was using, but No, I had to turn your face off. Ah uh, right. Yeah. I couldn't see. So I want this to be light enough so people can actually write over it. Um, otherwise it doesn't serve its function as writing paper. But I'm sort of leaving a bit of a gap in the middle anyway. So I'm just going to dry that off. Pick the rest up. I mean, even like that, doesn't that look lovely? You know, if you wanted to say fussy cut, any image at all and put it onto these sheets I, th I think they'd look gorgeous or, or you know any anything anything it's a nice it's a really enjoyable thing to do and the results are lovely this is the first one that we did so you can see it's dried quite light so I'm just going to do I haven't left a space for um, Tom Kitten so I'm going to leave this space here for Tom If you can move your sponge around while while you're doing it, you know, don't always go don't 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 move your sponge. Then you you won't get bits that look the same, look much more random. You kind of get the hang of it when you do it. I mean, it's not complicated. I'm just going to dry that off a little bit. But like I say, you need to be pouncing up and down, up and down. Don't go from um, side to side because you'll get marks that aren't very nice. So that's that one. That's where Tom's going in that one. Here's the one. We left this bit here for Tom so we can do the whole of this. Yeah, they're really nice, aren't they, Debbie? They're, they're 
I really like them a lot. I, when I used to paint furniture, I used it a lot for, for furniture as well. You get really nice effects. You know, if you're using a metallic, say, or whatever, it's uh, really, really, can be extremely pretty. So I'm just drying up what the surplus really. Did I leave a bit for Tom? Oh yeah, on the other side. This one hasn't got a Tom space, so I'll leave down here. It's a bit cleaner than the other side. So I'll just keep my hand there just to remind me not to uh, do the whole thing. That's fine, just dry it off. It's quite a light one, this one, so it should dry quite quickly. And you can see the difference between where the gesso is and where the gesso isn't, how this is taking up the, the paint. We're taking them up at different, quite differently. Uh, I'll leave that one for Tom. Just going to have the right amount, I think, of that colour. This is what you do if you skid, you get that sort of mark. So best thing to do is wait for it to dry and then sponge over it. It will happen, it's just, <clears throat> it's just bound to. So there we are, that's fine. Just dry that off a bit. Right, so you can leave it like that if you want to, which is perfectly nice really nice actually or you can go in with a slightly darker color very very you know being very tentative you don't want loads of dark color i'll just wipe that up i'm being tidy today <laughs> it's not like me i'm not a very tidy person i wish i was it would make things so much easier to find etc but if you're not you're not so I'll we'll just get another bit of that for when we need it. And I'm just going to mix um, a really watery solution of a, of a darker colour. Um, might have to go to my other little one. I think navy blue sounds about right. So let's go for that. So it says it's this one. Oh, that is a nice blue. So we want some of this, but we don't want masses. We don't want it to just swamp everywhere. It's more like a Prussian blue, that isn't it? It's really nice blue. All right, so I think that's probably going to do us. Um, oops, sorry about that. Just gonna squeeze my spritz my brush, get out of it what I can. Lovely. Spritz that to death. You do you know you can see this is a really watery um, solution. So I'll go back to the first one and my little bit of sponge. You don't need to clean this out or anything. You know, it's, we're not doing exact fine art here. We're having fun. So just little bits, really, really little bits. It will make a huge difference just being tiny, tiny little bits like that. So I'm just gonna dry that off. Just pick up what I can. It just adds this other dimension to it. There we are, hopefully that will dry. <clears throat> as I say, keep twisting your, your sponge as you do it. Then you won't get, it's not so much like stamping then. 
you know, if you're stamping, you have a, an image of whatever it is, an apple, and you keep stamping it, and you will always get an apple. We, we don't, we're not looking for that here. We're looking for quite the opposite, really. Randomness. So I'm just going to pick up a bit of that. I think this would actually be better if it was left to dry naturally, but we haven't got the luxury of that. So let's take off what I can. There we are. I mean, when you see that against the one without it, it's actually, there's quite a difference. I think the light today is not so good. I think I'm being bleached out here. Um, no. No one. I don't know which light it is, it's doing it, it's overhead time. I think that's better. Yeah, I think that's, that's better. We just switched all the lights off really and uh, just going on daylight and I think that's a lot better. I hope you can see a bit more clearly. You might be in the dark, but you can see, see the colour differences a little bit better. So there we are. Yeah, you can definitely see that more, I think. This is the one that we haven't done, the dark on, and this is the one that we have. So it's really quite a difference. This is where Tom's going down here, so I'm going to keep my hand there. A bit too carried away with it there. But you know, it's watercolour um, and a sponge, so you can pick it up just as you would pick up a, a spill, if somebody spilt water on your rug or something. It, it's really effective. I like it a lot. Right, let's leave that to dry and go back to whatever was the first one. <laughs> I can't remember what I'm, that must be, that must be the first one quite dark. Maybe it was when I first started out. It had more pigment in it. Okay, so let's dry that out. You can get some fantastic backgrounds by sponging and I would recommend that you do try them out. Um, because if you're doing a sort of a real, you know, as I would say, a real junk journal, it's a fantastic background, really lovely. I'm losing, I'm losing where I've been and where I haven't been actually, to be honest. I don't think I've done this one. Because you sort of lose the colour, it just gives a bit more dimension. Um, that needs doing. I'll just do that now. The front isn't dry, but what the heck, eh? Let's live dangerously. Right, so that's two shades of a very similar colour. Like I say, you can use any colour and it looks fabulous with metallics. Really, really, really fabulous. Um, I think this needs a bit on it and you can keep going you know you don't have to stop at one color or two colors you can keep going and going and going just find yourself a tool that you're comfortable using and i'm quite comfortable using this old bathroom sponge um i think i think they were two for a pound too, they're quite chunky as well. So I've got loads of um, art equipment out of that. And didn't cost much at all. That's that. That's done. That's done. That's done. That's done. That's not done.
the camera is back on now. Oh, hello. <laughs> it's the poor old dog. He looks out of the window morning, noon and night. And of course, in these times, there is nothing for him to see. Not a thing. So anytime he sees anything at all that interests him, he goes hurtling out the back door. Of course, he's only a shih tzu, so he can't see over the grass very well. Um, but he likes to get out and make contact with people if he possibly can. Um, and what he was just barking at was a horse. <laughs> Somebody decided to exercise the horse out the back. So, right, that's us finished with the watercolours. Um, could you just bring me a, a brush, please? I thought I'd brought one, but I'm just a straight square one like that, but uh, smaller possibly. Right, so the next thing to do is to do our Tom Kitten decoupage. So, excellent, we managed to leave space for him. So I'm just going to take this tissue paper off the uh, carrier paper. Thank you. I've, I've used this method for all sorts of things. Um, a while ago now, I bought a beautiful image of some birds and I decorated a jewellery cabinet and I used the bird deco... I printed it out several times and I used it for the sides and the top, etc. And it, it worked really well and it looked... Well, I thought it looked quite good. So same as with any tissue paper, you literally tear around it you don't really want to cut it if you can avoid it because then the eye perceives that um, whereas if it's cut it sort of it doesn't pick it up so, so readily of course this is not like the tissue paper that you'd get on napkins it's a bit I don't know how to describe it. it's a bit got a bit more body maybe yeah and it's a bit crink more crinkly. So let's give it a go. Start at the very beginning on this one. Pop him down there. Let's hope that it works all right. I, as a general rule, I don't put any uh, gel down first I normally go through the tissue I'm hoping that's going to work with this I can't quite remember how I've done it before because this as I say is just a slightly bit thicker so we'll give it a go I'm going to have to allow it time to sink in I think I'm not convinced that wants to stick like that. No, it doesn't want to stick. So what I'm going to do is put some glue down, some decoupage paste down first. Give it a chance of sticking to that, I think. I knew there was some sort of blooming trick with this, but I just couldn't remember what it was. Right, let's, let's try that then. Yeah, that looks like it wants to stick a bit better. So there we are. <laughs> looks cute, doesn't it? The gel that I'm using, um, in case you're interested, is a Fusion. I think I'll show you in a minute. Yeah, it looks nice there. It's a Fusion Mineral Paint a Decoupage and Transfer Gel. It's what I use for all of this stuff. I love it. it. To me, it's just the right consistency and the right everything. So that's it there. Any of your Fusion, local Fusion retailers, I'm pretty sure will carry it. Uh, or if not, go online. Uh, there's plenty of places to sell it online. So we'll tear out these ones.
Don't junk journals take a long time to make. You know, really. I mean, all we're doing is the writing paper that's going to go in one little flap of this blinking junk journal. And, you know, you just lose time doing it. Good job we love it, isn't it? <laughs> you wouldn't want to do it to earn your wages by, I don't think. Well, you couldn't. To all of you that are watching, do you sell your journals? Do you make them for yourselves? Do you make them for gifts? I was contemplating making a gift for my sister, actually. Uh, her and her husband love walking. Um, and they go to, well, they go all over the place. Within the country, they won't fly. Um, and the last time they went away, they went to the Shetland Islands. Um, they went to Orkney the time before, but they absolutely fell in love with the Shetland Islands. And I was thinking, they're going back again next year. And I was thinking I could make her a nice little, because she sends me photographs when they're away. You know, this is us, such a place. I thought if I could take those photographs, print them out, make a junk journal for her when she goes back again, that one might be quite nice. So I might do that. I'll bring you along on the journey if uh, if you choose to join me. It'd be nice. Um, you know, lots of tartans and things that are really, really Scottish. So we'll pop him that. And generally with decoupage, I just put half of it down. There's a wrinkle there that was in the tissue paper. I don't know if I can get it off or not. Put half of it down, make sure it's stuck. Get some more glue on your brush and then go from the centre all the way up like that and then round the sides. I know I'm teaching you how to suck eggs. I know you all know how to do this. But I've learnt today that if you're printing your own on tissue paper, you need to put glue down first. Otherwise, it doesn't stick. This one wants to wrinkle anyway. It'll be fine. It'll be fine once. Actually, it's not so bad now. Lovely. So that's two. Have a look. Um, Fairy Chic Emporium. Paula, sorry I'm late. Get in the naughty corner. Definitely. Oh no, you can't see from the naughty corner. <laughs> Come out the naughty corner. Um, hi, Charles. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, I know. I wish I'd taken more photographs of mine as well. I've, I have got some somewhere on my MacBook, but I've got so many hundreds of photographs on my MacBook that I I just, I, I'll lose the will to live going through it. I was, I was going through it this morning looking for some uh, arty stuff that I'd done a good few years ago and uh, yeah, you just get swamped in no time, you just can't like I say, you lose the will to live. So there we are, let's put, this is where he's going to live. Over here in the UK, they've just started a new series at seven o'clock every night of Bob Ross. Oh God, Bob Ross, he just does it, it just appears, it's like magic, the man is like magic. Um. He creates these masterpieces in half an hour. I mean, it would take me half an hour to pluck up the courage to put the first bit of paint on. But no, he's away. And every time it ends up blinking perfect. He's very soporific, actually, when you listen to him. They should put him on at bedtime because you listen to him and you think, oh, I could go off to sleep here. So there we are. That's the one that had the crease up it there, as you can see. I've flattened it out, but obviously it was creased. It had no ink on it, but I don't think it's... Um... It's all right, isn't it? It's okay. I'm glad we left a bit of a gap behind him because he would have been a bit swallowed up. So we've got this other page, other sheet of writing paper, should I say, and 
those three images, they came in a row. So I've either got big Tom. <laughs> He's quite big, isn't he? Or I've got quite, you know, <laughs> more sensibly sized Tom. Shall I go for big Tom? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's just do it. Crumbled saran wrap, yeah, definitely, definitely. There's a there's a name for that uh, for that thingy um, technique. Can't remember what it is now. I just wanted to, something sort of mottled. That was all I wanted, um, and you know, it's, you lot have got a thousand ways to do it. This is just the way that I sort of chose that I thought I could get all on my table, my desk at once and get it dry in time. Justin's working on the next book, lap book covers for me. Um, got all the leather binding on them and uh, he's got them both painted now. So it's me that's the slow coach on this one. But I'm blaming sewing over the weekend. Talking of weekends, guys, it would appear that I get many more people um, joining in the live on the Saturday than I do on either the Monday or the Wednesday. So I was thinking about doing a live Saturday and Sunday and then Wednesday. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know what you think. There we are then. Here's Big Tom. <laughs> yeah, he is quite large when you see him like that. He'd be fine. It's all right though, isn't he? Doesn't leave that much room for writing, but you've got all the back of it. So, put your glue down as we've discovered. Do that first. The glue obviously can't penetrate this tissue. And then... Oh, and I'm standing straight. Stick a bit of him down and go over it with the glue. And then a bit more over it with the glue, always from the centre out. That way then you won't get air bubbles. Keep this head to go. So there we are. There we are then. There's our writing paper. Done and dusted. Let's just check it over in case there's anything that I missed. They're looking all right, aren't they? Looking okay. So they'll get folded in half, uh, like I showed you with the, the lavender. This is the lavender one. Let me move these out of the way because I don't want anything to happen to them, but I definitely don't want anything to happen to the lavender. I would go bananas. So for those of you that missed it, this is the little booklet that goes... I'll show you where it goes on the Edith Holden one so you can visualise what I'm actually doing. This is the completed one and it opens up and opens up and this little booklet on the end is what we're doing. So I haven't actually started on any of this yet. This is the, the booklet that comes off. You just uh, undo that and there's a ribbon runs through it, which you take off. And then you've got a separate booklet to take with you. Just ties there on a ribbon so you can take the whole thing out. So, you know, this is as far as we've got. We haven't actually got as far as putting anything in the journal. So that's where that goes anyway. And this is the Flower Fairy, the lavender booklet. So that's really pretty and it's got a nice big pocket there. 
and it's got a little pocket within a pocket here and tag in there so plenty of interest which is what we like this is that uh, you might have missed me saying this but i actually treated myself to a set of flower fairy stamps and i stamped them out and then colored them in and stuck them onto this some mounted them onto this background it looks really pretty i think uh, then we've got this which has just got three journaling cards in with a nice piece of lace it opens up to this which has got a journaling card in more of the stamp things there uh, these windows which have got little tags in and then that brings us to well that's the front cover but inside the front cover is this foldy over bit and here is where the writing paper goes and you'll see for this one I made it lavender because I actually had lavender napkins so um, that was all right and I did it in just one color lilac -y sort of color with quite a bit of gesso because it was white that paper was white not the coffee stain stuff that we've used today so that's kind of what we're doing if you're wondering what in heaven's name we're up to so there we are now when they get properly properly dry and i mean properly dry not just you know good enough dry take a sanding block or something like this and it's really really soft but still sandpapery and just go over them and you'll knock it right back into the paper and you, it won't feel like decoupage then it'll feel just like it's part of the paper and you know if you've got any little high points or anything it'll knock it off and so they'll look a bit more distressed let's say a bit more worn so there you go guys that is it for today i think i hope you've enjoyed that hope you didn't find it boring uh, i know a lot of you will know these techniques in your sleep i know that but you know sometimes it's good just to have a bit of a recap isn't it <laughs> i'm really pleased that uh that, you know you, you've joined me today you know, deborah thank you very much debbie brilliant isabel used to do workshops at the shop with journals albums etc haven't sold any as they go to show the oh yeah that's the thing uh, actually uh isabel here that's commenting with you you might be hearing slightly more of isabel soon um because i think we're going to do a collaborative thing isabel and myself um it's a secret at the minute but you know hopefully it'll i'll let you know soon um never worked with paints well the the that was it we were working with paints they're dead easy it can't go wrong um like i say if you if you go mad and you splotch somewhere leave it to dry go over it with gesso and start again it does never uh, you've never wrecked it don't worry and i mean even if something traumatic happened scrumple it up and light the fire with it you know it's all right um oh thanks debbie that's really sweet yeah sanding i would definitely sand i mean don't Go at it like you're sanding furniture. Just gently go over it and you'll knock back any high bits so it'll look distressed, but it'll take on the feel of the rest of the paper. That's a nice feel. So um, just for those of you that are interested, Isabel does kits on her website and it is uh, Scotch Lodge Farm and Craft Shop. Scotch Lodge. Can I have that bit of paper, please? scotch lodge farm and craft shop have a look over onto our website let's face it we're not doing much else are we and have a look at the kits that she does because some of them are gorgeous and we might be doing one <laughs> so uh thanks for well thanks all of you you're always fantastic if you can if you haven't subscribed already although i think all of you have uh it would be great if you could if you you know if you want to tell your friends about me I don't know what you're going to say like but if you want to that would be great the more the merrier the more uh subscribers we get the more youtube puts it out there for more people to see so it's better for everybody thanks ever such a lot um i'll catch you on saturday saturday yes debbie brown crumple paper bag does as well there's loads of ways it's really exciting uh, I'll catch you on Saturday at two o'clock. Can't thank you enough for your company. It's really nice of you to join in. Thanks, Paula. Thanks, Charles, Debbie, Deborah, Isabel, 
Um, Luke, of course. Luke was waiting for me today. Thank you, Luke. Um, so Saturday at two. Bye.